Is the dip for ants finally over? And which altcoins may rally the hardest in the coming weeks? That's some of what we're going to address on today's show. And is there going to be any sort of a catalyst? I'm sure many of you are very, very surprised. You already know the news. And that is about Larry Fink. We can have a look at this over here. Uh, this was in an interview last night on Fox News. And massive that Bitcoin has not pumped yet. It's pretty surprising. So let's have a look at this video. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold in many yeah. ways. It's a, it's a, instead of investing in gold as a hedge against inflation, a hedge against the, uh, the onerous problems of any one country or, or the, or the devaluation of your currency, whatever country you're in, um, let's be clear. Bitcoin is an international asset. It's not based on any one currency. And so it, it, it can represent an asset that people can play like, as an alternative. I would call, the, the foundation of BlackRock is about hope. You invest for retirement because you believe tomorrow. So there it is, an international currency. Well, that's pretty major. If you look over here from Will Clemente, the CEO of the largest asset manager fund on earth, calling Bitcoin digital gold on live TV significantly decreases the risk of portfolio managers holding uh, Bitcoin. So what is the significance of that? Well, the significance is ultimately that if they're not going to be under pressure of losing their jobs, big fund managers, it means that they can now allocate towards Bitcoin. And then maybe that starts to diversify into other coins at a later stage, which uh, supports the notion that you have that flow of money, right? First, it's Bitcoin, then it's Ethereum, then it's large caps, then mid caps, and then finally the small caps run uh, as people start to get more and more comfortable with allocating towards the market. So pretty big news over there. And let's see if it has any sort of an effect on the market open. But you can see they're pushing pretty hard for the ETF to be approved. Um, and that will be huge if it does actually approve. So if you look also yesterday we did have the uh, Fed meeting which took place it was at least the minutes for a Fed meeting and TED Talk summarized it pretty well over here so let's quickly go through that and what they covered because it's been quite a while since we had the Fed uh, meetings and uh, it's always been a narrative within the market so he says yeah the market has become content with macro and there are large forces at play for crypto it's the spot Bitcoin ETF and then for traditional finance it's been artificial intelligence which has actually been pushing prices up and that's been made even more clear today by the lack of market reaction on the release of June's Fed meeting minutes, meaning the market didn't really care what the Fed had to say. But what did the Fed actually say? Well, they said this, the Fed staff predicts that there's going to be a mild recession likely to start later on this year. Uh, some participants favored a rate hike due to tight labor markets, stronger economic momentum, and very little evidence of inflation on the path of 2%. Almost all of the participants judge it appropriate to leave rates unchanged. So saying that they're not going to be raising interest rates. Oh, let's quickly put the screen up. A few participants note the potential for upward pressure on money market rates as treasury increases bill issuance. Almost all participants state that the upside risk to inflation might become unanchored. And then the staff's inflation forecast has now uh, has inflation now at 3% this year and core inflation at 3.7%. Risk around the baseline inflation forecast tilted to the upside. And then this is the big one in 2025, both total and core PCE inflation are expected to be close to 2%, which was their ultimate target, right? So you're looking at about 2025. Also in line with the notion that as per the Bitcoin timing cycle, you'd be looking at a peak within Bitcoin uh, if the timing cycles persist, should be sometime towards the uh, Q4 of 2025. And remember, the markets are forward looking by six to 12 months. And therefore, what does that mean? Well, six to 12 months before the peak of 2025 uh, is when you can expect the markets to start to really take off. And that's in line with inflation targets being hit. So liquidity has bottomed and the path for monetary policy has become more clear. And and while that path may be higher for longer, risk thrives when clarity begins to appear. So remember, the market likes clarity. The market doesn't like it. It loves clarity. And if it's forward looking by six to 12 months, 
and it has clarity, it means that the pieces could start to fall together again and potentially uh, the market will rally off of that. So if you also look at the S&P 500, it tends to follow this bullish path of the presidential cycle. So here you have the presidential cycles on the bottom and typically you can expect that uh, it starts to rally into that cycle, which is also something that's coming up and could be a potential catalyst alongside the Bitcoin BlackRock ETF. And if you look over here as well, we've now gone 28 straight days without a 1% drop in the S&P 500. And this guy says over here, it feels like a lot, but it's not really a lot consecutive days without a 1% drop in the SPX, that's the S&P 500. Depicted on this chart, you can see uh, we over here, it's, it's pretty normal actually. So when the market does start to rally, you can expect major, major runs. You can go up to uh, close to just above 100 days without any 1% pullbacks when the market really gets heated. So for those who are thinking that the rally is overextended yet, well, this chart uh, tends to disagree and says otherwise. So uh, what does that mean for Bitcoin though? Well, Bitcoin weekly chart's still looking pretty good in the sense that we're maintaining the trend, higher highs and high lows. So there's your supporting trend line and we got the higher highs on the top over here. Uh, this is a high high, but we're looking for something more than that uh, because we've just been consolidating if you look over here. And what I wanted to outline is this order block level over here. Well, if you look at the weekly charts, this could be a potential level that would get filled. Uh, historically, all of the big pushes that we've had up over here got filled at least 50%. So if you take your, let's make that bigger, and if you take your FIB tool and you kind of just measure it out, and you take from the top of the candle, down, across, and then you look, where did that wick come into? Well, it came into the 50% level uh, of the previous expansive candle. So if we apply that to the same logic on the next candle, let's see over here what happened, and we go from top to the bottom of that candle. This one went over here, 50%, right? The wick came through the 50% level. So let's apply that same logic again to the next expansive candle and try and pick up where price could potentially catch a bid if it does have another leg down. And remember, that's a big F because there's no guarantees over here. Price could technically just break out from this level and continue on up. But if you do pull this across, here's your 50% level something I only found out this morning. I found it quite interesting. I was just looking through price action and I'll mark that level off uh, with precision over there for you. So you can write that down. Let's make it nice and big uh, style. Let's go there for, there we go. And let's put it green because that would be your buy zone. So potentially if price does come down into this order block region and fill this gap area, you're looking at about $28,870 for Bitcoin. So that could be a potential area where you might want to set your bids. But again, there's no guarantee that price will even come into this region. And that's why I've implemented the strategy with the uh, little bit of capital that I still have available because I've been pretty much fully invested for quite a long period of time as a swing trader. I gained some of my entries at the bottom over here, shaved some off at the top coming into the 200 day moving average, uh, pulled back from or 200 week moving average, pulled back off of that and then fully loaded up on this week over here. And ever since um, I've kind of been applying the same strategy every time we're setting a new higher high, I start to shave some of that off and then I re-add all of that in the bottom. So I've been pretty much added again since and the only positions that I still have open or capital available is this account over here, which is a $50,000 portfolio. I've spread the orders between 28,000 and 30,355 in the possibility that you might see the same uh, application take place whereby you fill 50% of this expansive wick. So use that what you will. If you want to follow along with that strategy, then uh, OKX does have the bots. All you have to do is click on the link in the description below. You get up to $30,000 in sign up bonuses as well. Uh, check them out. You set up a grid trading strategy is what it's called. You'll need to go to the top over here, change it from manual strategy to trading bot. Look on the right hand side. You can do spot grids or futures. I'm on a futures grid running 5X leverage over there. Let's move on to the DXY, which has been pushing up towards our target level over here. Uh, I expect a bit of a rejection if it does come into the zone or at the very least a pause. So just a couple of percentage points away. If that does push up, remember, it creates a little bit of a risk of environment for risky assets, which is the stock market and crypto. That's why we're kind of pausing as this is moving up. If it starts to reject off here, usually that brings a bit of confidence back into the risk on assets and the market may start to rally. 
if you want to trade any of these other assets, right, or if you want to trade uh, Forex or uh, commodities or even crypto pairs all on one exchange, Prime XBT, they are one of the sponsors. So just a quick plug in and, and shout out for them since they do sponsor the channel. There's a sign up bonus below. Also in the description, that gives you up to $7,000 in sign up bonuses. It's a 7% bonus. But again, I'm extending the same offer. I have a couple of codes left. If you do want the 20% bonus, click the link below, sign up, and then DM me on Twitter using your ID and uh, the user ID for your Prime account, and I'll send you the 20% sign up bonus. Okay, let's move on from there. Uh, I want to go on to ETH BTC. ETH BTC kind of consolidating just above the 0.25 level of the range. It doesn't look too hot to me. It's not really showing anything that it's going to have a major bid up into the top side over here, uh, which is why I basically moved into Bitcoin and I continue to remain in that position. This could be the low high. Um, it's kind of like overall for swing trading perspective, uh, I don't really see it worthwhile being in in ETH over Bitcoin at the moment. At a later stage, I'll reevaluate. Ultimately, I think this resolves back to the bottom of the range low. And I'll show you on another chart towards the end when we start to cover the altcoins. I'll show you what the ETH BTC chart looks like on a um, on a swing trading uh, position over there. So let's look at total, we'll see what's happening over here on total. Uh, total continues to, similar to Bitcoin, hold its higher lows, yet to make a higher high though. So that hasn't come into the market yet. And that's obviously because it's being held back by the altcoin market. Total two though, if you look at total two over here, total two is pushing into the mid range. And we said potentially you could break above this mid range level and then you might push up into this zone over here. But this is really where you need to be careful to watch for any deviations. Remember total two refers to Ethereum and the rest of the altcoin market. Total three, let's look at total three. We've been focusing on this as a potential Wyckoff accumulation schematic two. If that were to play out, really it only gets going once you break all of these resistance levels. What are the resistance levels? Well, it's your down sloping trend line, which matches up with your channel towards the downside, the parallel channel leading to the downside. So one area to break. The second area is the horizontal channel, which has been holding over here. So there's your next level of confluence. We need to get above that. Once you get above that and you start to consolidate into this top box over here, that would be your SOS phase of the Wyckoff accumulation schematic. You can just look on Google if you want to see what all of those different phases refer to, but that's really where the altcoins get heated. Until then, it still runs the risk of being a Wyckoff accumulation schematic one. What does schematic one suggest? Schematic one suggests that you get a secondary low, which means that this would not necessarily be the ultimate low, but lining up once again with our parallel channel to the downside, you might break below that and sweep into this area. Of course, ultimately crushing the altcoins uh, and taking away the last little bit of hope. So we have to be cautious and careful of that before we start to jump into altcoins. You're looking as a percentage wise to the downside, that could potentially be another 30% down for the altcoin market as a whole, right? So be careful of that. Um, next, Let's look at Bitcoin over here on the daily chart while it's still holding the moving averages over here. We have the nine and the, uh, excuse me, this is the eight and the uh, 21 EMA. We are still currently holding above these, uh, which is a good sign, right? As long as it continues to hold that as support, it has a potential of reclaiming the pivot level. But that's the change that we've had. We've now closed below the pivot level for one of the first times. This pivot level constantly moves up, right? So if the pivot level was over here before, um, even though price was hovering around here, it was holding above that pivot level. The pivot level continued to rise and rise and rise. And right now, as of yesterday, we had our first close below that pivot level. Where's the level coming in at? Well, it's $30,869, which means we need to bounce off of these moving averages soon and get above that pivot level. Otherwise, risk could be towards the downside. Ethereum, let's have a look over here. Ethereum has just today reclaim the pivot level. Its pivot level is coming in at 1,925. Uh, so that is, excuse me, let me say that again, 1,921. So price is at 1,925, a couple of dollars above. As long as it can hold and close above this, then this would be a little bit of a fake out towards the downside and risk continues to remain up for Ethereum. Okay, let's go on to Bitcoin on the lower time frames. Stochastic RSIs are starting to turn back up. Let's just quickly move on to the correct list over here. Let's look at Ethereum. Ethereum, you can see also stochastic RSIs are starting to turn up and you expect that that 50 
EMA, the red one, should be acting as support. So could it be that this is just a bit of a deviation below, a little bit of a shakeout and reclaim? Of course, that's a possibility. We need to see how these candles close above first. If they start to close above here, a couple of four hour candles above and everything is back on for Bitcoin. However, if you start to lose that and close below this trend line, then ultimately you're gonna probably revert all the way back down to the 200 EMA, which is the blue line coming in at 28,900, which lines up with what I showed you over here on the weekly chart, right? Look, 28,870, that would be your super buy the dip area in my personal opinion, okay? Ethereum, same thing for Ethereum. It's 200 EMA is coming in at 1860. And also it could potentially reclaim this level. And then that's gonna be your next high low, right? So lows over here, high low, and then continue with the trend. Uh, one hour time frame. very quick on the one hour time frame. we outlined yesterday, these are the levels to watch, uh, ping pong between the top and the bottom. So of course it came a little bit lower, still met the diagonal yellow trend line on the hourly chart, recaptured the mid range now, which is at 30,401. These charts are in the Discord group, by the way, if you want to see them so you can get the exact levels. It was posted in the Discord group a couple of days ago. Nothing has changed on these levels. So as long as price holds above this mid-range over here, again, pushing up, you're trading it from level to level as a range. This is the low time frame trader. So zooming in, you would expect something like this. Again, so long over here, change the color to white, going long from there. TP1 into this level, TP2 coming into the range high. Basically, you can consider already flipping short from there. If you're a low time frame trader, TP1 and same thing, TP2. And you've just been able to play ping pong within this range for a couple of days. Uh, you can compound your profits over there and basically just continue to play that exact range. Let's quickly go on to um, ETH, see ETH's range and what's happening over there. Okay, Ethereum, I'm gonna delete the yellow lines that I have here for Ethereum, because these are not so relevant anymore. We broke out of that a couple of days ago. Let's clear some of that up. Okay, there we go, here's ETH. Basically what I'd be looking at for ETH is you wanna get back above the previous month's high, price levels that's coming in at 1,944, start closing back above there. And you can say also this was a deviation and your next target is the main liquidity at 2020. That liquidity has not yet changed, right? If you look at the Bitcoin liquidity or the heat maps on high block capital, it's coming in at this level at 31,500. Expect a push into that zone and you need to reevaluate and reassess the market once that level gets hit. If price comes into 31,500 or a little bit above at 32,000, you need to reevaluate and see what happens from there. If there's an extremely strong rejection and a swing failure pattern on a higher time frame, that could be indicate trouble for Bitcoin and mean that you might go lower. If it consolidates at that level again, you're probably setting up for an even bigger move at a later stage. Look at the uh, liquidation delta over here on the bottom. You can see, again, market participants started to flip short right at the bottom of that range. And ultimately, price is now starting to move up, meaning that these guys are probably gonna get taken out of those positions. And it's just been a big, big game of chop, right? Chop up, chop down, and basically you're getting taken out of your positions left, right, and center if you're someone trading on high leverage. If you're on lower leverage, well, then you're probably okay, not too bad. Uh, also, guys, before I move on, take one second out of your day to smash the like button. It really helps to get the show content out there. Um, I see there's more than 1,300 of you live right now. It really, really helps to get the show content out there. If you're live, just quickly smash the like button um, and then we'll continue. Speaking of high block capital, I want to quickly go over here, move this over. Let's go to my profile. So, a lot of you were DMing me asking for some sort of a deal on high block capital because we have sign up bonuses on all these exchanges. It took, oh, there I am, I'm live. <laughs> it took such a long time in order to get this, but it finally came through. I'm not joking when I say I've been trying for about three months. And here it is. There's the referral link. I just got it literally 15 or 20 minutes before the show started. So only from tomorrow will it be in the link in the description below. For now, Go through to my Twitter. There is a link over there. You're getting 15% off. Um, this is institutional data. It's usually quite pricey and expensive. But if you take your trading very seriously, it's spot on. Um, you guys have seen me use it a lot. Those liquidation levels work like an absolute bomb and you're getting 15% off. You can't get that anywhere else, by the way. As far as I know, no one 
in the entire crypto sphere or YouTube have this opportunity. 15% off, it's in the link. There's Banter Girl, she says, love it. She was one of the people that messaged me. Uh, so there it is, finally got the link for you. Okay, let's have a look over here at trading light. If you do look down towards the low levels, you can see this area is also being heavily defended by bids. You have 3,000 uh, Bitcoin positions, which are basically trying to establish a wall of uh, support over here. So we'll watch this level carefully. It's something that I'll start to bring up a little bit more often, uh, getting into the finer details since we, we're trading on these lower time frames. So also moving on, if you're wondering why ETH is so expensive, well, because I noticed yesterday I had to make a transfer and I was like, I think it was like $15. And uh, the previous couple of days before that, it was only around like two or $3. So it's quite a big uh, jump up in price. Uh, he says over here, this is Saigar, uh, the top ETH gas guzzler uh, is this contract where users make validators run useless or unnecessary code just to increase overall gas usage. People are literally burning their money to increase gas fees for everyone else. So they're trying to push the gas, uh, the gas prices up. This is why it is worth, if you're somebody that makes a lot of quick in and out trades, uh, consider using one of the other, uh, one of the other networks, right? Uh, consider using Arbitrum uh, and, and just moving some over onto that side for quick. Uh, it's obviously not necessarily as secure as ETH, but ultimately you're gonna get cheaper fees. So just a quick uh, tip or pro hack over there or use the, uh, the BNB smart chain as well. That's also an option. Okay, look, if you have a look on chain over here, Celsius seems to be starting already to swap the altcoins for BTC and ETH. Maybe that'll create a bit of a pump in Bitcoin and ETH, get a little bit of momentum going. But ultimately that means those altcoins are going to start to, to take immense pressure towards the downside. A, a reminder of what those coins are, we looked through these quite a long time ago. Uh, these are the coins, right? Celsius, Link, Aave, SNX, uh, TGBP, uh, I don't even know what this is, PaxG, I think that's Pax Gold, uh, BNB, Matic, Uniswap, ZRX, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. One inch mana, FTX token, AVAX, uh, basic attention token, KNC. I don't know what that is. BNT, I don't know what that is. But ultimately, it's $164 million worth of sell pressure. So expect that those coins, especially if it can push them through an important support level, will create additional selling pressure. You probably want to be careful if you are in those coins. Now, which coins could potentially do well? Um, over the next coming of weeks, next coming of weeks, look at this English, over the next coming weeks, well, there's a couple of them over here. And when I say a couple, I'm literally mean that too. There's probably two of them. One that's been outperforming again, I'll say it time and time again, guys, you have to uh, compare it to BTC. When it's BTC season, which it is right now, that can continue for longer than you can remain solvent. Remember the saying, right? That the market can remain irrational longer than what you can remain solvent, which means that the Bitcoin season can continue for longer than what you can believe. And therefore, you want to check any coins that you're looking to trade as a swing trade or momentum trade. Uh, very, very simple strategy. Just use the super guppy indicator. I know that people love that word, the super guppy indicator. So you go over here, super guppy. There you go. It's this one. CM super guppy indicator by Fritz Murphy, who has 5,800 people who have this on, on their charts already. It's a conglomerate of different exponential moving averages. If you love an altcoin, all I ask you to do is just go take that altcoin. Let's say you love injective protocol because injective protocol has been a pretty hot topic lately and put injective protocol against BTC. If it looks like this, well, you can continue your love relationship with injective protocol because it's probably gonna continue. This is establishing a pretty decent uptrend over here. Super Guppy turned green all the way back in January and this has just completely outperformed Bitcoin. From here to here, uh, current price action, it's 154% up against Bitcoin and I think Bitcoin is up around 100% on the year. So from bottom to absolute top, 280% against Bitcoin, which is pretty damn good. Uh, I went ahead and I looked at the absolute top performing ones of the week against Bitcoin and the coins that from a USD value perspective have pumped the absolute most, which might create a lot of excitement. But then when you come and you face reality by putting it on this indicator over here, you can really start to see where the trend is. So how did I do this? Well, very simple. 
Go on to CoinGecko. This is a simple exercise that you need to do. Firstly, you can have CoinGecko values in USD. Now you can go on to the seven day. Let's say it needs to uh, outperform at least over seven days, right? Compound is the best performer in the top 100 over the last seven days with 60% upside. Let's scroll down to the bottom. Then you can go to point number two, right? Let's go arrange it in order again. Quantum in the, so from coin number 101 to 200, uh, Quantum is the top performer. Cello, he has another one. Uh, Yearn Finance up 14.4%. That's against USD values, right? Uh, now let's, you can continue down the list, right? If you want lower and lower caps, just go uh, page three, four, five, six, seven, and so forth. Now, what you want to do, once you identify the ones that are doing very well in USD value, go and see how have they done against BTC. So you type in the top over there, currency, select currency, Bitcoin value. Now let's go back to the start over here. Let's go on to page one. Here's page one. Okay, arrange, seven day value. Okay, eCash. Who knows what eCash is? I don't know what eCash is, but eCash is 60% up against Bitcoin. Compound, which is a common one, we know, we know about Compound, up 46.5% against Bitcoin. Now what you do, once you identify all of these so-called strong players over the last seven days, you want to go and establish has the trend really reversed? Is it, is it worthwhile taking a swing trade position where you're going to hold this coin for a long period of time? Of course, day trades, guys. I'm not talking to the day traders. There's plenty coins on a day trade basis. You, you're not looking to, to outperform Bitcoin because you're just looking for your R, right? Your risk to reward. You just want to, to get a certain amount of R and that's the end of it. It doesn't matter, matter whether that R comes from Bitcoin, gold, the S&P 500, the DXY, uh, anything. It can come from anything in the world. You just you calculate your risk to reward and you want your R and that's that. I'm talking to people that are looking to swing trade and they want to hold these positions for the next coming weeks to potentially even months. And you want to make sure that you're betting on the strongest and fastest horse. Then this is what you do. So you go to the BTC value, you identify now compound, right? So we go here, let's look at compound. How's compound doing? Compound BTC. You can see very, very big move. But has the trend really shifted? Well, according to the Super Guppy, which is such a simple, uh, easy, easy way to look at, at the charts, it's not. It's not green. It hasn't turned green. The trend hasn't shifted. This could potentially just be exactly like one of these scenarios where you have a big move up and it just fades down, right? Here you have a lot of excitement on, on this side. Let's zoom in. So you can see over there, a lot of excitement around here. Could it just be this? Big pump up, ultimately retrace. Big pump up, retrace. Big pump up, retrace. For a range, that's great, right? If you're trading this as a range, you can do very well against Bitcoin. Basically, just mark out your range. Anytime that you come into the bottom of the range, yes, of course, then you buy compound, get to the top of the range, sell your compound for Bitcoin. Comes back down, bottom of the range, buy compound, top of the range, sell compound back for Bitcoin, and so forth. But as a trend trade, does this look like a trend? Well, not yet. This could very, very well easily be just a pump that's gonna be slowly bled out and retraced. So as for the coins that are pretty strong, really the only ones I've, I've found is uh, Injective Protocol and Casper. That's it. Injective Protocol and Casper, look over here, go on to the monthly, on the yearly, Casper, boom, 7,466%. So you need to consider that when you're taking these trades because I know we get caught up in the hype. Things get very exciting with altcoins and something seems super promising, but ultimately have a look over here. He has Maker. This was, this was also one of the top ones. I took the top ones from each, each page. Trend has not shifted yet, right? Yes, it's a big move, but there's a lot of work to be done over here. This could ultimately bleed out. This could definitely bleed out. It could do the same thing, right? Big pump and ultimately come back down. Cello, same thing. No change of trend, right? possible just pump and dump big move up who knows who does this i don't know they could be coordinated from a big group that used to be major cello holders and they say well let's pump it let's all take leverage and stuff really uh artificially increase the value and then start to exit the position once retail get excited and start to to take some of those coins off the table uh because ultimately it's trending to zero could be the case i don't know uh arbitrum 
strong downtrend, right? Also considered one of the stronger ones. Strong downtrend. Look at that against Bitcoin. Absolutely getting wrecked. So from my side and my perspective, really, it's just Bitcoin season at the moment. ETH BTC. I told you I'd show you uh, when early on in the show. ETH BTC on, from a trend trading basis. Well, there it is. Kind of just lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. Slowly but surely just bleeding out against Bitcoin. I don't think that it's, it's ETH season yet. So you want to remain patient. I, I don't want to disclose how much I had of Bitcoin way back, but there was a cycle where I had a huge amount of Bitcoin and I thought, okay, I timed it too early. I, I, I wasn't experiencing crypto yet. I timed it too early. I wasn't really even looking at the, the pair against BTC charts. And ultimately my BTC value, uh, of course my relative value went up huge. I made a massive amount of money in dollars, but my BTC value actually went down by about 75%. I would consider that getting absolutely wrecked. And therefore, guys, I'm just trying to impart these lessons on you. If you're new here, well, you're probably not new here. If, you, if you're still here after this long, you're definitely an OG. You're definitely committed. Uh, you're definitely focused. And I just think it's a very valuable lesson, something to consider going forward. Always check against the BTC pair. If you're an ETH maxi and you think ETH is the best thing since sliced bread, well, check the pay against ETH then. You can still type in injective against ETH, compound ETH, uh, maker ETH, et cetera, et cetera. But right now, this is the strongest dog in town. It's still BTC for the time being. All right, that brings us to the end, folks. Smash the like button, hit the bell notification and subscribe to the channel. I will not be seeing you tomorrow because we have a very, very big meeting. We have so much stuff planned for you guys uh, coming later down the pipeline and it requires uh, a strategy session where we all sit together and plan and that overlaps over my show between 8 and 10 a.m. our time tomorrow. So I will see you probably all on Monday then. Have a fantastic weekend. Uh, much love to all of you. Appreciate all of you. And I'll see you all then. Cheers for now.